There's two things I love in this world, and that is, of course, Lord of the Rings and Valheim. No, he's So imagine my delight when I find out they've already gone and done it. They've created a Lord of the Rings survival game. Oh my god! Return to Moria was released October last year, and I kind of feel like it flew under the radar simply because on PC it was released only on the Epic Game Store, and on console it was only released on the PlayStation 5. Don't worry, Xbox plebs, you'll get your turn this year. So you're probably wondering, who are the brave developers to take on such a monumental task of making a Lord of the Rings survival game? That would of course be Free Range Games. You may recognise a few of their titles. I'll be honest, I didn't even know Abe's Odyssey was still going. Maybe that'll be my next review? Question mark? It was also published by a more well-known game studio, North Beach Games. They've done titles such as Seven Days to Die and Stranded Deep. But I'm sure this title is in capable hands. I mean, let's be honest, it can't be any worse than Gollum. But anyway, that's enough of an intro. Let's go check out Return to Moria and if it's worth playing in 2024. Honestly, at this point, if a game doesn't have a character creation screen, then I automatically turn it off, refund it and never play it again. Now, obviously, the character creation is somewhat limited. You can't be a elf or a hobbit. You are simply a dwarf. And there's only one main aspect you have to worry about, and that's of course, the length of your beard. A dwarf without a beard is truly criminal. Once you are done naming your dwarf, you can then select to play offline or play with friends, if you have any. The basic plot of the game, and to not give too much away, is that Gimli has called upon his fellow dwarfs to come help him explore Moria once again. You may remember Moria from the first Lord of the Rings, Essentially, the Fellowship took a shortcut through this Dwarven mine, which had actually been taken over by Orcs and had a hidden surprise in the basement. A Balrog. A demon of the ancient world. Hey, sisters, run! I haven't got to the end of this game yet, but if I don't see a Balrog, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Return to Moria takes place after the events of Return of the King, and it's set in the Fourth Era. But there are callbacks to Fellowship of the Ring. So how do we get inside Moria, you might be asking. Well, Gimli tries to blow up the door, which is sealed by an evil curse. It doesn't work. And lo and behold, you are trapped inside Moria, and your task is to try and escape. Is everyone okay with the lore so far? I'm sorry if I butchered it. Get this video to 1069 likes, and I'll make an ASMR of me reading the whole Lord of the Rings book. I joke, 10,069 likes, I ain't fucking doing that shit for a thousand. But I digress, let's go take a look at the gameplay and how it all comes together. As I said earlier, this is a survival game, so you will have to eat food so you don't starve to death. <laughs> Build a camp so you can craft more gear and actually go to sleep. You also have to go out and collect resources because after all, dwarves are known for being miners. Not those kind, for fuck's sake. When you are mining, you can actually sing for inspiration, which gives you a little boon, which helps you mine a bit quicker. And although some people might see this as gimmicky, I kind of like it. It adds to the environment, and it makes the game feel a bit more Lord of the Ringsy. You can also get boons from admiring your pile of gold and creating hero statue monument things. And there is indeed enemies and bosses you'll have to defeat on your way when you try to escape Moria. The world is procedurally generated, but not to the full effect that you might see from Minecraft. And this is where the game becomes more like grounded as opposed to Valheim. There are set zones with set items which you'll have to go and explore. You can't just skip to end game, you have to follow through each biome, following the story as it progresses. The procedural generation comes into play in regards to the layout of the zones, although some assets are the same. Either way, I'm a fan of survival games with plot, 
I don't mind being dumped in the middle of nowhere and you make your own adventure. But games like Grounded and Subnautica, yes they are survival games, but they also have an element of RPG. And it's this which motivates you to carry on playing so you don't just give up because you're done building your world. In regards to the progression in this game, it's pretty straightforward. You have to unlock new recipes and to do that you need to go and repair these statues. Doing so will give you new tools and weapons you can craft and these tools and weapons can be used to mine higher up material so that you can get better gear, better weapons and naturally progress. Sadly, you can't just mine any wall and start digging in a particular direction, so skipping past the biome is pretty much impossible. But to add to the variety in the game, each area isn't just one level, you can actually build platforms so you can start climbing up and down certain areas. This obviously gets harder the more you progress. And don't assume this is some sort of Care Bear flower picking survival game. There are dangers around every corner. And be careful because when it does hit nightfall, the Yorks will come out in their numbers. Look at all those chickens! In regards to the combat, it's pretty straightforward. You can block, you can heavy attack, you can enchant weapons. There's indeed armor that you can craft and there's different tiers of weapons and a variety of weapons. But if you come to this game expecting Elden Ring gameplay, then you're going to be disappointed. It's probably more on par with Valheim's combat and that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think it works in this type of environment. And just like Valheim, there are different bosses that you have to defeat in order to progress further into the story. And in regards to the Lord of the Rings lore, there are different items scattered about which you can pick up and read, which give a callback to the events which happened prior to your arrival. Overall, I think the gameplay is pretty solid, however, there are a few problems which I think tarnish this title, which I'll talk about next. Seven fat fucking dwarfs running around a fucking place with shit fucking combat, building shit bases on shit places, and if you try to do it yourself, it's all out of fucking alignment with shitty combat, shitty exploration. It's just shit. He's out of line, but he's right. That there was worth a buy given his honest review of Return to Moria, which, to be honest, is a rarity for this game. Simply put, a lot of influencers, air quotes, whatever you want to call them, content creators, got paid to play this game and with that comes quite a lot of positive reviews without them actually truly giving any harsh criticism. So let me start with mine. I think early game the tutorial stage is just too slow and boring and that's going to put a lot of people off. I think I complained for 4 hours because I couldn't figure out how to fast travel and it wasn't until later on that I realised you could do it but you had to have these gems which come later on in the game. Which meant up until this point I was pretty pissed off that I had to keep running all the way back to my first camp and then I just ended up moving my camp and abandoning the first place I actually settled in there. The early combat and AI is pretty terrible to be honest, it's not until later on when the bosses and enemies start to get harder that you feel more challenged and that is actually worth playing. Early on as well when it comes to cooking you can craft food but you can't take it with you, you have to eat it there and then and it's not until later on when you create a oven that you learn how to make snacks which you can take with you and it's worth noting that actually consuming food restores your health so up until this point it's kind of hard to restore health because just munching berries and hoping for the best the early zone as well it's just it's too large it has large open chasms and there's just no real materials to be gained there's loads of boxes you can smash and you might get a bit of beef jerky and that's about it it just feels quite pointless searching these rooms. And I'll be honest, I did play this game before multiplayer with a couple of friends, but for whatever reason, I just didn't progress the game any further with them. And when I started again, I decided to play solo. And there were events where loads of orcs would chase me down, and it was actually difficult to some degree, and I killed them, and I felt good about myself. But honestly, looking back at that, I felt like if I had seven other people helping me, how easy would this game be? Especially with the bosses, like... The bosses are tough if you're on your own, but seven dwarfs smashing the shit out of someone, I just don't see it being challenging. And something that I haven't actually talked about much is the actual building in this game. When it comes to games like Valheim and Grounded, you can really customise your house and make it feel a bit more homely. With this one, I don't know, it just feels like they're temporary bases. And it's more of a chore as opposed to something that you guys spend a lot of time on. Maybe in later game you can craft furniture, but from what I've seen so far, 
Nothing about this makes me want to like fully commit to building a big fuck off camp with like turrets and whatever else, you know? I don't want to make a dwarf kingdom. I just want to put my bedroll down and have a respawn point. And also, the building itself could do with a little bit more polish. There's just some really weird misalignments with like floor panels and the walls and all sorts. And even when you're trying to do the quick build in the open, for whatever reason, like your bit of wood just doesn't go into place that it should. I do like the fact that the walls are load bearing, so you can't just make these random floating walls. They have to have structure in place. But other than that, it's just, I don't know, it's a very weak building system. There's been a lot of comparisons between this and Valheim by multiple sites and content creators, but personally, I just don't think that's fair because Valheim is just miles above Return to Moria, quite frankly. And I don't mean that in a negative, like, slight on this game. This game is good, it has its own qualities, but it's by no means got the same replayability as what Valheim has. But anyway, I don't want to go on too much because I don't want you to think I don't like this game because it's quite the opposite. I do enjoy it. It's just got a lot of room for improvement. As far as survival titles go, this is by far not the worst, but not the best. In years to come, people won't be talking about this the same way they do with Minecraft, Terraria, and Valheim. I don't usually talk about price points with games, but I think it's worth mentioning that currently this game is advertised as £30, whereas the other titles just mentioned are half that, if not one quarter of the price. Although, at the time of recording, it is currently half price on the Epic Game Store. Overall though, I do like the concept of a Lord of the Rings survival game. I just think that it's too restrictive being stuck in a mine. And quite honestly, I don't see this game having a lot of replayability. Once I complete this game, I doubt I'm going to come back to it. Unless someone makes some ridiculous mod for this game, I really do feel like it'll probably fizzle out in the next year. So is it worth playing in 2024? I mean, if you have some spare time and you're not busy doing other stuff, sure, give it a go. But don't expect this game to consume your life. And on that bombshell, I'll end the video there. But what do you guys think? Did you play this game? Did you enjoy it? Do you think there's not enough to it? Or do you think it's perfect just the way it is? And whilst I've got your attention, if you want to see more videos like this and you've enjoyed this review, please consider becoming a subscriber. It costs nothing and it boosts my ego. And don't forget 10,069 likes and I will give you a Lord of the Rings ASMR. I'll leave some videos on the screen for you right now which you might enjoy and hopefully I'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye for now.